Nigeria's Human Rights Commission has raised concerns over what it says is a rising food crisis in the country. Now, what exactly is the situation and how can this be tackled? Well, also on the breakfast, should the NNPC be unbundled and disbanded? So says the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and deposed Emir of Kano II, Lamido Sanusi. Of course, we have discussions on these ahead. Plus, after the press, I look at the latest from today's national newspapers and analysis of some of those headlines on the front pages. You're welcome to The Breakfast. We're back. It's a brand new week and of course interesting uh, discussions right here on Plus TV Africa starting with the breakfast. Uh, we have discussions all through the day. My name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning. And I am Messi Bokpo. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Yes, indeed. Uh, should we say happy holidays, Mercy? Really? Indeed. Is that yes, holiday? Today is a public holiday. She oh, forgot God. today is a public holiday. I actually um, Yes, indeed. And uh, we're back. Uh, with discussions. So roads in Lagos don't look like there's anything going on today, really. Um, yeah, because... You know, <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, the only thing that maybe may be one of those uh, um, pops around that, uh, you know, have people staying in till like 7 a.m. on Monday morning. I don't know if they're still dancing. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, before we get to our major conversations, we'll look at the papers. But before then, let's look at what's been trending as far as conversations in social space. Our spaces are concerned. A lot of Twitter spaces over the weekend. Uh, quite interesting one from by NDLEA. And I think one of the NDLEA stories is uh, somewhere in the, in the papers. But the the new governor of Akiti State, uh, Biodo Yebanji, his... Um, uh, he has assumed office, of course. Um, he was uh, sworn in in a very nice ceremony right there in uh, the Ekiti State Capitol, uh, which was attended by quite uh, uh, a number of um, dignitaries. And uh, the one that interests me, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people, uh, is the fact that uh, President Mahal Buhari was represented at that, swearing in by the All Progressives Congress uh, presidential candidate Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu. He was, it was quite interesting. Uh, he gave a speech, uh, represented the president. But we'll look at that as we go to the analysis of this story. But anyway, um, Biodo Yebanjo has made some interesting uh, uh, statements. He's appointed a senior uh, secretary of the state government. He also went ahead to uh, freeze um, the state government account. I mean, that seems to be a smart move. He has to freeze the account immediately so that, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, so he was sworn in following his inauguration, uh, following his... Um, his victory at the polls, and he'll be, as, as expected, uh, taking a 10 or 4 years as governor. Now, he's saying he will run an all-inclusive government, um, and uh, he would uh, make prosperity, um, abundance, unity, and equity thrive and blossom in Ekiti State. He came out with a six-point agenda. Um, is it six or seven points? Uh, six-point agenda. But he says his administration will focus on human capital, or place a high premium. Let me use these words now. Human capital development. All right, that's number one. Agriculture, number two. Ro uh, and rural development. Infrastructure and industrialization, number three. Arts, culture, tourism. And uh, good governance. All right, to transform a kitty and make it a, a microcosm of development. So... Uh, that should be seven-point agenda. Human capital development, agriculture, rural development, infrastructure and industrialization, arts, culture, and tourism, and Google. So six. Um, uh, I think that's it. That's it. Uh, those who were there, of course, we had Bola Matibu, like I said, a number of governors were there. Uh, not just APC governors, uh, but PDP governors as well. I saw Gaduna Basaki, governor of Edo State. He was there. He tweeted about it, and he and I had some nice pictures to share you know, with his followers on Twitter. Um, so it's quite interesting, Mercy. Uh, he spoke, you know, his speech, he sounded very positive. It was a very uh, well-written speech. Uh, it sounded inspirational, if, if I could say that. Mm. And um, he said it's a new, this is a new day for Ekiti State. So I, I, I do not know if this is a speech that was written by a very good speech writer or the man actually can deliver. That's, that's what we 
we'll so so I, i'll pick it up from where you 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 know you landed and the word is whether he can deliver because that's very important uh, that's where it lies because at the end of the day you find out that uh, prior to now and everyone would canvas uh, there are a lot of persons who actually said hey we want to become the governor of ikiti state you had different persons from different political parties uh, vying for that position however it's important with all of this has been put out it's always easy for politicians to put out the statement and say hey this is what we want to to do and as much as you would say that that sounds like uh, a very very uh, coordinated speech sound very inspirational and what have you uh, the question is is there capacity to deliver does that translate into action at the end of the day i mean implementation and doing and another thing also it's uh, how will all of these things be achieved right because uh, usually it's it would be tagged as policy statement and and it's always very common among politicians it's easy to wake up and say hey i will do xyz in 2023 uh, nigeria will become you know a nation where people would walk by the road and pick money <laughs> or in 2023, all, everyone will become rich. All of this are uh, policy statement because uh, when you look at it, there's no, the how to achieving all of this is not being stated. So yes, as much as all of that sounds fantastic, it wouldn't be the first governor, it wouldn't be the second, it wouldn't also be you know, the third politician who would make uh, very brilliant and uh, give wonderful speeches and talk about uh, what they intend to do. But all of this would just be policy statement if there's no action to all of this and how all you know, will be addressed. Now, but I will also think that it's important that you know, the governor elect pays attention to the issues of revenue. Revenue is a general issue for the country as a whole. And we understand the dynamics of getting back to the Federation account, you know, to, to get at the end of the month. And uh, uh, with the fact that, you know, we're grappling with revenue as a country, uh, we're talking about the Federation account, he should be thinking inwards how to generate revenue, you know, to run uh, the state at the end of the day. And, uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. We wish him the very best and we hope that he gets, you know, he swings into action and not just mere statement. It's also, right. impo it's also yes. important that, yeah. you know, the people of Akiti State hold him accountable because I think that we're also uh, of a culture where we get to elect people to represent our interests and we leave it at that. We don't, we don't longer ask questions. We are not concerned about what happens, all of the policies, what are the intention. If, if there's a, a blueprint, how do you know, citizens follow through? And not, not yeah. necessarily, yeah. Uh, you know, the governor, yeah. but yeah. members of his cabinet. I, I have an, uh, a, you know, I was listening to the story, to the news on the radio while, you know, coming to work this morning. And um, what, what, what came to mind was, okay, when I heard the governor of Giti State say he has a six-point agenda, and I, I'm like, okay, I mean, since Yerdua, you know, came on, we've been here at a six-point agenda. Yerdua had a seven-point ag agenda from our Nigerian president of blessed memory. Uh, the late Omar Musa Yerdua had a, a seven-point agenda. And then um, uh, Dr. Goddard Jonathan came with his, I think, um, but was it should, Jonathan who had a seven point agenda and you had yes. like three points? I don't know, it's a bit confusing. And I, I'm like, um, why, why do these politicians need to have a numbered point agenda? Should it be a number point? I mean, can't you have something you know unique to you? You know, because since it's like a culture now, a tradition where well, I have a two point agenda, I think Peter B of the Labour Party presidential candidate said he has is it seven point agenda or something that uh. Uh, or Konko, the, the, the actor, turned lawyer, turned politician, who was the head of the Konko, was talking about some time ago. So must it always be a, a something point agenda? I mean, can't you just say I'm going to focus on A, B, or I'm just going to provide good governance or something? You know, I mean, I need these guys to... No, so, 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 so to the point, Mercy, where if I hear a politician saying, uh, I have a two-point agenda, seven-point agenda, nine-point agenda, I think you can't, you're not original. You know, you're not, you're not, uh, not you're, you're trying to come up with something that somebody has come up, come up with your own. You know, why must it be something? But that's what I think. Um, and also, if you are a governor, should you focus on only six things? Can't you say, we're going to look at every area of governance who will do well. And then make campaign promises and say, okay, I want to deliver in this, like you said, specifics. 
not seven point agenda, you know, six point. So, so I would think that that's, a, six, you know, uh, that's a default so we have, setting. We have to, that's we have that's to basically on. a default setting, you know, for the people. Because if you look at it, once upon a time, shortly after you had the civil war and the recovery, there were several developmental plans. And so you say, oh, we had, uh, you know, development plans. And that's what it is. And no, everybody, but, but, and, and but just is, like you have rightly no, mentioned. But this is not a development plan. You no, know, no just, just, plan. just like you've rightly mentioned now. Yeah. Um, so you say you have different sectors. You know, we have different sectors of the economy. And so usually for the president, this is my, you know, perspective to this. And I feel like someone just say, okay, I want, I want to focus on the education how, sector. How so we say the education so, so, sector, so, so one point saying, agenda, I mean, two point agenda and all of that. What is, but, what is that? Even, even, even when Yaradwa <laughs> came up with it, I, I never, it never sat well with me. It sounded like something good to be able to sell to people. I mean, you, when you come to government, you, you try to do everything. You know, if you focus on only one thing or seven things, it's so large. That's all I'm saying. I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, I know people may disagree with, with that, but I think that um, don't limit yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't say. Oh, so, 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 it's, it's sometimes it's just. I think it's just for the optics. For the, this sounds good. It sounds good. You know, some would even create an agenda that rhymes with their name. If your name is maybe Mercy, M E R C Y, they'll create an agenda M. For mother and don't, child. Don't even e, go there. E for energy. <laughs> R for uh, rehabilitation. C for, um, I don't know, I don't know. Kofi, let's see. Let, let, let's and, then, and I'm like, okay, is you just creating some... So I, underst I understand it's what, what you're saying. Let's, e let's even say people. that. Let's Stop e deceiving people. Let's even say that that's the case, whether they come with one point agenda. But if you look at all of the agendas, let's talk about what the level of implementation is. So I wouldn't even be bothered about whether or not it's original I'm, or it's I'm, copied, I'm, I'm right? Bothered. But I, I would rather even say that, so even so as, it, it, as much as we say that there's no originality to it, but what's the level of implementation? Uh, How that's far? That's the word, yes. originality. Yes. <laughs> I hope this <laughs> is listening. <laughs> you know, so if you know? we question the originality of it, it's even not a problem. But we're saying that that, that you have proposed to do. Messi, it's a problem. Uh, have you, I, have, I'm, have I'm you been able to implement Messi, it's it? A, it's a problem. So it, it, it's another thing. It's, I'm just you can, if you're not original enough to create something that is unique and not just to copy or to take what others are saying, then how can we how can we trust you to even be original enough to solve the problem? So government is there to solve people's problems, Messi. You know, it, it kind of tells who you are, how you're thinking. For instance, now you have presidential candidates who are sounding shallow to me. You know, they sound people are jumping at everything, but they're not deep. They're not giving us deep things, and, and you that's, know, and, and specifics. I, I, you see, you can throw statistics out there and people will jump. But for those who know, they don't just jump at statistics, right? You can't say, oh, um, this is a steady percent, 20 percent. You have to be, you have to be deep, be about something. Let's hear from you. I get your point. You know, but so, I'm so, 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 okay. So let's say he focuses on agriculture and rural development. I mean, what's up with that? Just that, how? Okay, let's say it focuses on um, human capital development, how? All right. Uh, let's say it focuses on industrialization. How? And so, what about the other areas? Hmm? He's going to abandon sports. Okay. You, you tell him, oh, sports is under culture and tourism. You see, so why, why, why do these things? Just say we're going to make sure we, you know, run, and then every area, you know, don't limit yourself. So, so, you, but there's something that you actually mentioned that's very critical because government exists to solve problems, and when you look at public policy, that's where it is. It comes from there. If you look at the policy circle, is that Every time you have government existing, policy should be formulated towards solving these problems. For instance, I would expect that, because it's a national situation, we're talking about security, and the trickle-down effect will come down. So whatever affects us at the national level, uh, you know how we think that you know insecurity is a certain part of the region, and so it doesn't bother us. It would trickle down to other parts of the country. And so top priority is ensuring that lives and properties are secured, because that's where the conversation starts from. You have the issue of food security, which is a major conversation. I mean, look at the flooding uh, the flooding that we're faced with, whether or not it's a natural disaster or is man-made or it's as a result of negligence on the part of those who should be responsible, which is government, among others. Uh, these are the issues. So it's quite encompassing. You stated something very important. How much of these policies at the end of the year, these agendas and proposition reflect the interests and the needs of the people? And then you have lofty policies. You know, uh, 
at the end of the day, you look at some of government agenda and, you know, the issues. Another issue that we have as a nation is the issue of revenue. And if revenue affects the entire country, it would trickle down to the state because of the form of government that we run, where you have the unit running to the center, you know, for pockets, uh, you know, for handouts. That would be the word. So um, hoping that as much as it might not be, I would go back to the word of originality, but also expecting that, you know, the government would also do what they are saying. So even if you say you want to human capital is the issue how try and implement it let's not hear too many you know english and grammar without work according to coffee would say it's grammar moving away quickly for the yeah. want of time <laughs> the ndla has arrested a pregnant woman an undergraduate and others for the possession of illicit drugs and so uh, that's because of the operation and activities according to the report the operatives of the national drug law enforcement agency and dlea arrested 28 persons uh, like i mentioned the category of this person uh, for the possession of uh, cannabis and uh, other pharmaceuticals that are not supposed to be tramadol would be it uh, they were arrested during an operation that was carried out across 12 states of the Federation. Uh, the states are Yobe, Undo State, Edo Rivers, Akwaibom, Imo, Jigawa. Uh, you also have Adamawa, Kaduna, Kwara, Lagos, and the FCT, that's uh, the Federal Capital Territory. And this is it. And that also has been a very big issue. We understand, uh, you know, the, the issue with drug and drug involvement and the busting of... Uh, 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 you know, those who are practicing and those who have these drugs uh, with them. It has been a lot. And the one that actually is marveling, you know, today, while I was looking through, you know, the topic again for the second, I started thinking, if you look at the people involved, you had women. And I'm like, where, where have we gotten into? Because usually some of these crimes are only limited to, you know, the male counterpart or the male folk. But, I mean, it's not just a drug and uh, uh, the trading of drug and what have you activities, illicit activity of drugs, it's not just limited to a particular gender now. It's encompassing and so it calls for a lot of worry and concern. Uh, Kofi, but what do you make of all of this? Yeah, it makes sense. I think you've said it all, you know, um, uh, and uh, uh, we just have to ensure that the, this uh, situation is, is nipped in the bud and the NDLE are doing a good job at that. You know, but for the want of time, I'll go quickly to, to the next one for which I, I, I'll, I'll take your very short analysis on. The 16 young uh, Nigerians have been deported by the Ghanaian government. 16 young Nigerians, youngsters, uh, have been deported by the Ghanaian government for engaging in cybercrime. Uh, cybercrime makes it sound a bit, um, you know... <laughs> <Touche>. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the word. But anyway, uh, it was learned that the 16 young, 16 young men were arrested in Ghana uh, when operatives were attached to the Ghana Economic and Financial Crime uh, unit raided their residencies. The returnees were received uh, by the immigration immigration officers led by the controller at Seme border, Chuko Emeka Dika, said they were arrested by the Ghana immigration officials who raided their residence and deported uh, back to the country. So it remains to be seen whether the uh, the um, EFCC will take over from there or they will be allowed to go home. I think they're, they're being allowed to go home. I don't know, Mercy. But what are your thoughts on this? We have just about two minutes. Okay, so I would I would start off from, uh, you know, the part where a, a preliminary investigation was carried out. And it was discovered that some of them were lured into this. You know the Jaqua uh, fever right now? Lured into uh, cybercrime? Yes, mm -hmm. because... They were lured into cyber, for instance, so I, it was, I'm getting to that point. I talked about the Jaqua fever that is here. Everyone who wants to, almost everyone feels that, you know, you need to get out uh, from here because the grass looks greener on the other side. And so there's a need to get out. And a lot of them were lured uh, to it. For instance, they were told that, okay, you get to Ghana, we're going to get a job. And uh, when they got there, it wasn't what they bargained for. And that's according to the investigation. And so it, this is coming from a mentality of get quick rich, you know, that mentality, the get rich quick scheme and that's why you have all of the Ponzi scheme where people would invest a certain amount uh, and you know 40% you invest a certain amount and you want a return of 40% yeah but, 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 but some went into with the mind they wanted to go and do yeah so 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 it's a mixed multitude it's a mixed multitude so for yeah. those who went in with the mind that hey this is what I want to do but it all stems from uh, the, the same mentality that we're talking about jackpot fever make it quick <laughs> they call it uh, jackpot fever now <laughs> <laughs> you know and yeah. so, so there's a 
lot, but it's not an excuse. Like one yeah. would always say, there's no excuse for crime. There's no excuse for criminality. Yeah. As much as we would say yes, uh, when you look at home, when you come back at home, we're talking about Nigeria, the basic infrastructure and the things that we need to survive, the basic things are not there. But yeah. should that be a reason why people should, you know, delve into all of this? Yeah, of it's course. not. Of course. It's I, mean, not if, a reason. I mean, even if you do it here, you'll be arrested now. You But my, my, um, I, my, I think they've been handed over to the immigration service. Uh, I don't know if they were handed over to immigration services. I don't know whether they would be handed over to the EFCC, you know, so they can be prosecuted. But um, the thing is this, you know, this, this are the, these are the situations that make life uh, for Nigerians to travel abroad difficult. You know, uh, th those who, the few, because, I mean, they are not the majority, who go abroad and uh, engage in crime, uh, make it difficult for, for legitimate Nigerians who want to travel, and uh, do their work without fear, without any intimidation, without any ulterior motives. And I think we need to we need to talk to our young people to you know to tell them, see, you can't be traveling outside the country to go do uh, things that are wrong. I remember the situation that Abeke Dabri had to intervene in recently, and it was proven it was actually information came out that oh, the people involved were engaged in some sort of um, uh, uh, crime. You know, and she had to come out to advise people, and so so that this is these are the kind of things that we need to address as well. You know, we have we have um, yeah, cold relationships between Nigeria and other countries in terms of business. You know, look at xenophobia in South Africa. Uh, the the traders in Ghana, especially from Southeast, who are having a difficult time. Nigerian traders who are having a difficult time in Kumasi, to be precise, having a difficult time with the Ghanaian traders. You know, and um, you look at those things, but then you have you know this this thing. You know, um, I, I think that if you if you do some serious investigative research, you realize that uh, this Yahoo was exported to Ghana, and the Ghanaians are, have actually adopted it, the uh, Ghanaian youngsters, and I even have not improved on it. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, you know, I've had people say, "Oh, we have some young boys who have come to an area. They're living somewhere in Accra. We don't know what they're doing, but all we see is they're always inside. Uh, they'll tell me, oh, we always see they're inside.'" Um, they don't go out, they go out at night to go and party, and then they go home with girls and they are inside. So I have, um, I, I know someone who is um, an electrical technician who went to do some uh, fittings for one of these guys. When he said when he went to the house, what he saw, this was about maybe eight years ago, computers everywhere, mm. you know, computers everywhere. Uh, so, I mean, I have friends who are there doing these things. So it, it makes life uh, difficult for people who come from Nigeria, who go around the world and have no business with crime. You know, people begin to judge them and begin to rate, you know, based on what they see, which is wrong, which is wrong. Mm. Because you have criminals in every country. Yes, you know of course we saying? have criminals. And, yeah, and, yeah. and if you also talk about the issue of, um, as it's called, uh, the internet fraud or crime, mm. Yahoo, Yahoo, as has been stated, if you look at it in the statistics, uh, this is not to say that uh, it's a plus for us. We're not the ones stopping the chat. Now, just about seven, ranked number okay, seven so or who, eight. Who, who is stopping the uh, chat? So you have, I don't remember the country at mm, the time, mm, but Nigeria mm. is not on top of the list, you know, okay, in terms of, okay. you know, this kind of crime. So if you feel there's some, so, some sort of a maybe misrepresentation and stigmatization. Yeah, yeah so, 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 so mm. this is what I think. Because I don't believe that there are absolute, I believe in relative, right? There are no absolute. So there's no country without crime. There's no country without crime and criminality. But um, for former late, uh, she, she was a minister, communication, she died. Uh, she was talking about Better Nigeria, remind me. Okay, okay, name? Dora Kunyuli. Dora Kunyuli. So Dora Kunyuli, once upon a time of blessed memory, she, 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 she shared her experience. And then there was a projection that she constantly talked about protecting the Nigerian image, you know, mm -hmm. better Nigeria, yeah. some sort yeah. of campaign at that time. Good people, now, great nation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there was an experience that Dora Kunyuli talked about and said that we Nigerians are very quick to bastardize and, uh, you know, be very critical of ourselves and put us out there. Mm. Now, not to say that these crimes do happen. So she shared an experience that she had when she was traveling, I think from, uh, she was traveling back from France, one of this country, Paris, back to Nigeria and her bag was stolen at the airport. And according to her, she said she wanted to, you know, raise an alarm, like, you know, we would do, oh, thief, thief, and what have you. So um, the police that were around, people told her, you don't have to shout, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know what, we're going to actually take care of the situation. And she said, up until the moment she was talking, there was no feedback, there was no investigation whatsoever. The issue died down. So I think that, yes, as much as we say that our country is, uh, you know, we have our issues, uh, but, you know, most times I think that we have always, it's like saying you have a bad child. 
You constantly just go out and tell everybody that your child is bad and what have you. And that's the case with Nigeria. But however, that's the much we can take. Uh, we take a break now and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. Okunabon, Kataria, all things being equal, will join us. Stay with us.